Alex, maybe you can draw out how these fan tokens work and if there's anything that needs to change about them for them to be something that works in the future. So it's quite an involved process. Usually what you have to do is you have to buy a coin which is you know, for sale on many of the crypto exchanges that people know about. One of the big ones, for example, is called uh, a Chili's. You buy this coin called Chili's with a Z and that then enables you to buy the fan token. So it is a, 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 a means of exchange which then opens you into this world where you can buy not just football teams, but also um, UFC, Formula One racing, some Basque NBA teams as well. It, there's a whole world within it. Now, in theory, what those co uh, tokens let you do is then have some say in the running of the club. But the thing is, it's not usually anything particularly substantive. It's stuff like what color should they paint the dressing room or the changing room or what songs should they play as they go out on the pitch at the beginning of the game? It's all fairly trivial stuff and there's kind of not really a limit on how much you could spend to get these tokens. So there are questions about what really they're doing. Are they getting people into crypto or are they actually delivering some value for fans? Yeah, Alex, I'm glad you brought that up. And Anna, I want to uh, bring you in uh, because Alex <laughs> mentioned some of the things that fans can potentially get if they buy into these tokens. But, but are they really meant for fans or are they meant for uh, crypto uh, people who want to just, you know, uh, broaden their portfolio? What, what's your take? Well, of course, the marketing is around fan engagement, but if you look, as Alex was saying, it's nothing really substantial about how the club is run, but it's more like minor decisions, such as messages in the captain's armband. So it really, it really makes you wonder um, if it's really for the fans or it's rather for people who are interested in the crypto. Of course, fans will buy because it's their club and it's a way to support it, um, a different way to support it. But it's, it's, it feels more it's really for, you know, introducing people into the crypto world. And then I, you know, one thing Jen had mentioned was that the reality is the, the clubs themselves are not raising all that much money when it comes to covering expenses. And also you've written about this. Sometimes they've gotten in trouble for the way they've advertised the way that they are raising money in cryptocurrency worlds. So what are some of the issues you're seeing as clubs seek to raise money this way? So, um, as you were saying, the way they are advertising it is, uh, is an issue. Arsenal was uh, told off by the UK's um, advertising regulator because of the way it uh, sold to or advertised uh, to have uh, their adverts on, on uh, the, their fan token. Basically, because it didn't explain the, this is a crypto asset after all, and it didn't explain the, the risk of buying into crypto assets. So people like fans buying this type of assets weren't aware, uh, were, weren't fully aware of what they were exactly buying. In some cases, um, it can really tell clubs aren't really aware either of how it really works, but it just feels like uh, fear of missing out to some extent. And also, yes, it's not a lot of money, but uh, any money is kind of good when, um, you know, after the pandemic, they were, the finances were really battered. So even if it they didn't raise a lot of money for some clubs. It was really an opportunity to to raise some. Uh, Alex, what's your take on that? I, and do you think the blame goes to the clubs for not really sort of taking the initiative to make this a little bit more lucrative for fans? Well, I mean, particularly during the pandemic, we saw that lockdowns meant that really put a strain on club finances. So then you have some of these companies going to clubs and saying essentially free money for not a huge amount of effort on the club side. Uh, so. On, you could say there's some blame there because the clubs aren't yet providing any real value to their fans. But from the fan side, there are kind of two layers of risk because you're exposed to the fluctuations of two of the, the coin, first thing that you buy in order to buy the token, and then the token itself. So the token might go down or the token might go up, but it's denominated usually in the coin that you bought it with, Chili's in the case of Socios, which is probably the biggest one. So that is something where you're given the nature of the rewards you're offering to fans the things we talked about you know trivial colors of buses that sort of thing it's probably more appealing to a young fan than it is to uh you know a more mature fan so therefore the implication is you're getting young fans into the world of crypto who aren't necessarily fully educated in those financial risks and the responsibility of that of course falls on the, the fan token companies themselves and inevitably the clubs. You know, Irena was talking about the advertising aspect of this and the onus that falls on the club to be more clear about the risks here. But what about the exchanges, Alex? What responsibility do the exchanges have to make sure that these tokens are, are getting out there correctly in the way that they are advertised? 
Well, again, there are two layers of exchanges, right? Because you've got, you know, you might buy uh, the socios through Binance or something like that. You can also just buy it in the app. They will say that they do a lot to, uh, to help educate people. It's still very, very easy to go into the app, buy these um, tokens, and you're not bombarded with lots of warning signs. You know, it, it is sort of gamified, perhaps, in a, in a, in a similar way to Robinhood and, and, and other such apps. It's, it's a tricky situation, inevitably, because ultimately, the kind of things they're delivering are similar to fan memberships, where you might pay, for argument's sake, 100 pounds a year, 50 or 50 bucks a year, whatever it is, depending on the team. And that gives you pri some privileges as a member and you pay that in perpetuity. What the likes of socios will say, well, you pay one off and then you get, you know, benefits in perpetuity for that one off payment. And the value for the club is that if they provide better uh, rewards, then the value of the coin will increase because more people want to buy it. So the club is incentivized to provide better benefits. But it's all sort of hypothesizing. And in practice, not much of that has really happened.